Welcome back to Fabrica Benedicta, the Blessed Workshop. My name is Ken Henderson, and today we're tackling a project that will transform your workshop from a lumberyard avalanche zone to a haven of organized bliss. We're continuing the cleanup in this garage to make it a workshop. And today we're tackling a lumber storage cart. But before we unleash the power of organization, let's ask for a little divine guidance, shall we? You know, stepping on a rogue two by four is no way to start a project. So in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, grant us the thirst for knowledge, like St. Ambrose, as we embark on building this lumber storage cart. May this project be the first step in our woodworking journey, filled with learning and discovery. Grant us the wisdom to follow the plan and the skills to bring it to life and protect our fingers from errant saw blades and keep our projects blessed with success. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. We all know the struggle of tripping over loose boards and searching for that right piece of lumber. Well, this cart will help you solve that. You can easily roll it anywhere you need, maximizing your workspace and minimizing the risk for becoming a human Jenga tower. As we build this essential cart, let's explore the importance of foundational knowledge in where we're working. That's the virtue that we're working on today. So just like St. Ambrose, a renowned fourth century scholar and theologian. Now, St. Ambrose wasn't exactly known for building bookshelves. With all, with all those scrolls, maybe he should have. But he was a lifelong learner, which is exactly what we're doing, growing in knowledge and skills. This project is our springboard for future endeavors. So this lumber cart is designed to conquer clutter and keep your lumber organized. It's simple, versatile, and perfect for any workshop, even if your workshop resembles a squirrel's winter stash. Here's what this cart offers. Effortless organization. Keep your lumber neatly stacked and accessible. No more emergency speed locking expeditions for that missing two by four or little piece. So for instance, I have everything organized here. It goes from little tiny two inch pieces and they gr gradually get larger until you get over to this side and you have approximately four foot pieces. And then you can see on the ends here, there's, there's room for full sheets of sheet goods, plywood, uh, full length dimension lumber, trim pieces, smaller, uh, bigger pieces, all the way down to two by fours. And then on the other side is your scrap sheet goods. One thing that I wanted to do for this lumber cart that I haven't seen before was that I wanted a place to put my two inch sheet foam that I used to cut on. Um, it's a, you know, sacrificial piece of cutting material. And, I can slide that right in there. It doesn't get bound up uh, with the sheet goods. It slides right in and out. So that was something I really needed in, in this project um, that made it different than I think others. So let's get on with the build, shall we? So the first thing we did was to make the base and I used a, a half inch sheet of plywood that's uh, cut down to seven in seven feet by three feet, and then uh, made a frame out of two by fours, you can see here, and the frame is divided into about 16 to 18 inch sections uh, with cross beams there, and then I'm attaching the casters here. Um, these are three and a half inch casters. Hindsight now, I would probably go with a larger caster. I've got one of the casters actually uh, kind of deformed under the weight, so I'm gonna have to replace it. Um, but, and I've also discovered that I think I'm going to always put a, uh, uh, straight casters on most of the part and then, just, uh, swivel casters like on two places or toward one end because they get really wonky as they start to roll. So then I created a central frame. This frame is going right down the center, um, and it's about four feet tall. Um, I will have all the dimensions uh, specified in the plans that I'm going to make available for this video. 
So you can see here that I'm actually using Craig Rip Cut Jig. And this really is helpful when you want to cut down plywood into smaller pieces. Uh, four inches wide is about as small as you can do, but it's really nice. Uh, don't have to pull out the table saw to, to cut everything into ripped pieces. And then I'm using, so here I pulled out my table saw um, to actually now cut down some things into smaller pieces. Um, and so I pulled up the side uh, wings there and then put on my fence that I made and just getting it set to the thickness or width that I want to make my cuts to, adjusting it and getting it all set up. And you can see there that I've got it all ready to go. And so once I get it ready, set and go, then I'll just uh, rip those pieces down to size as I will need them. Um, and so there are several pieces that are going to form the face frame uh, for the sheet goods that are scrap street goods. Uh, so here I'm going to start cutting them down to size and I set my uh, saw here to do repeatable cuts and you can see I got that board on that one end and I can just take those pieces now and just toss them in there, cut, cut, cut. And I'm just stacking them on, on the, the board here so that I can have them ready for me when I need them. Uh, it really helps if you have a lot of pieces just to go ahead and cut them all up at once. Here we go. Um, this is the face uh, that holds up. It's going to be set at a five degree angle on the front or back, however you want to uh, say it, on the on the cart. And this is where the sheet, the scrap sheet goods, will lean up against, and it will hold quite a few uh, scrap pieces of sheet goods. So I made it in a kind of a lattice way, uh, cross members here with a. Uh, thicker pieces uh, as ribs going from the top to the bottom and then horizontal pieces that are much thinner uh, to conserve weight um, and I'm I should have before I got to this point I should have gone ahead and cut uh, put my pocket holes into it but as you can see here I have another way to put pocket holes in so I've got um, both of the ways to do the pocket holes from Craig I've got this little hand uh, jig here that I can cut my pocket holes if I need to, but I've also have their other uh, product, their, their pocket hole uh, pro jig. Um, really like the, the Craig products. And so we put this in place on the uh, cart uh, at a five degree angle, which, you know, the measurement comes out and I mark the measurements and then put it, uh, attach it with my pocket hole screws there at the base of all of them. And then once that's all in place, uh, we'll put the uh, top on, and I've got the top attached, and then we'll start putting in the shelving um, in, into it. So I just attach it with some brad nails there at the top um, to hold that in place, and then we're going to slide. So you can see those rails there are made to hold the actual shelving pieces in place. So I can slide my shelving pieces in place, and I, I really, most of this, uh, wood cart is lumber cart has been made out of scrap wood that I had so I tried not to buy anything except for the casters and I did have to buy one sheet of half inch plywood for the back uh, but everything else came from scrap that I had and that was important to me so since I did it out of scrap I didn't have one piece for the top that would be wide enough so I had to attach two pieces together um, but I still made do, and that's, that's, that's great, you know, when you're, when you're working on a project like this, the knowledge that you uh, gain uh, from being able to, on the fly, make things work. Um, so, I had a couple of other pieces that I had to stitch together and attach to the top. It made a little bit of adjustments to my measurements, but it still worked out just great. And then I took a little trim piece and I uh, put a spacer in there between and so I put my foam the pink two inch pink foam in there that I use to cut things on and put that little trim piece in there so that I could keep that divided from the sheet goods now here's my Craig Pro jig that I'm using to cut the pocket holes for the backing and so I'm going to cut those pocket uh, drill those pocket holes in place and then attach that into, into place on the back so put it on the cart Attach uh, a rail there with some brad nails to put that backing up against. Attach those screws into place. 
And this is where the back will be, where all the compartments and um, will be for to, for smaller um, scrap goods. So I'm going to cut out the pieces for the compartments. I've got some uniquely shaped design pieces there. Uh, but basically it is to give a graduated division of parts and scraps. And for me, this works out really well because I'd like to know, you know, when I have very large scrap pieces and very tiny scrap pieces, and I keep things up to about two inches for the most part. If I have an abundance of pieces, of course I'll toss them. But this is the, this end piece here is the compartment for all the smaller pieces. And then these dividers are put in place to divide up the larger pieces. Again, pocket holes, pocket holes, tops uh, on the sides and bottoms, holding them in place. I find pocket holes for wood, uh, for uh, projects like this for your uh, wood shop is perfectly fine uh, and, and a good way to join pieces together rather than more complicated or complex joinery methods. So once I get all these dividers in place, then I will start putting rails on the front, make sure I got everything squared up pretty well um, and then in place. And then I will put some rails on the front of those compartments, dividers, to um, give a space, a place for uh, the goods to be able to be divided and placed in, a, in two compartments there. Again, using pocket holes. I've used pocket holes all over this project. I did say I tried not to buy anything. I did buy pocket hole screws, but of course, you know, um, those are necessary. So I put a base layer of, the, uh, of a um, fence basically at the bottom of that so that it would hold the goods in place. And then I put a another rail uh, a little higher up so that it would um, be able to keep things from falling over and out of the compartments. And I tried to keep all of the dimensions within the three feet wide uh, parameters. I didn't want to put things on the outside. Like I could have just made one long rail and put on the outside of this, of this containers, but I found that I wanted everything to be con compartmentalized inside of the frame there of those dividers. So. This was the best way to attach them that I found. So once I have all these compartments divided up with the rails on there, and I put some inner rails to, to divide those compartments into, into half, basically. So the back parts, will, the back containers, uh, compartments will hold taller pieces and the front containers will hold shorter, short, shorter pieces. Sure I've got everything all squared up and measured right there and then I'm going to go ahead and divide this last section uh, which will hold all of my smaller pieces going from about a foot to two inches to the top and, and there you see the completed cart and with all loaded up with all my scrap. So there you have it your very own lumber storage cart ready to conquer clutter and streamline your workshop. Remember this is just the beginning of your woodworking journey. There's so much more to discover and so much more we've got ahead of us and hopefully a lot less tripping involved. So like this video, subscribe to Fabrica Benedicta for more workshop projects and let's build something amazing together and maybe even learn a saintly thing or two along the way. God bless. One more test and then we'll go. One more test and then we'll go. One more test and then we'll go. And there you have it. Your very own lumber cart. Where's my glasses? St. Ambrose wasn't it? Ah!
try that again. Thought I had it. Thought I had it. Thought I had it. But I didn't seem to really have it. Now I have it.